what is the incorrect match among these things? Tamil Nadu postgraduate entrance 2014. Classical question. Whenever bone secondaries are there, there is a winkling all sign. Astrogenic sarcoma, all of you know there is a sundry appearance and earrings is known for onion peel appearance is what need to be remembered. What is this called as doctor? This is called soap bubble appearance is what you need to basically remember. <coughs> so, if you look at the Jain cell tumor, classically there are lytic lesions, they will grow into the articular surface which is a very characteristic uh, feature is what need to be remembered. Then uh, which tumor among bone tumors is known to lead to osteoid formation? Once more, osteogenic sarcoma is basically associated. Multinucleate Jain cells, we see in osteoclastoma. Chicken wire calcification pattern, classical of chondroblastoma. And small blue round cells which are pass positive along with bone destruction is the classical feature of Ewing sarcoma is what I want to ultimately underscore for all of you. What is Blount's disease? As all of you know, Genovarum, Tibia vara is basically called as Blount's disease uh, and uh, this is called the varus deformity. Varus is outwards, I mean uh, curvature outwards. So, Genovarus is what you typically come across. Where do you see avascular necrosis? Very commonly. We see it in the neck of femur, head of the humerus, proximal, sorry, uh, talus body, neck of femur and proximal scaphoid. Huh? Head of humerus we don't see, no? Do we? Fracture of the head and neck of femur, scaphoid waist, body of talus are the classical locations. So you want to say head of the humerus, neck of femur is classical for avian. Okay, uh, you mean to say, but talus body means fracture is not given. No, why did you choose then? Talus body, neck of talus fracture. Oh, exact body you want to say. So better we give it as head of the femur. Oh, okay, fracture neck of femur uh, should be the correct. But B is not vulnerable. B is definitely not vulnerable. Head of humerus. Oh, uh, I don't think so, but we will recheck that. Hmm? Okay. <clears throat> so, first question itself has a lot of debate in Tamil Nadu PG 2014. What is wrong about unreduced anterior shoulder dislocation? There is a depression of the anterior axillary fold, not a, a elevation of anterior axillary fold. And what is meant by Dugas test, doctor? Touching the opposite shoulder is called Dugas. Inability to do that is positive typically in anterior dislocation of the shoulder. What is Callaway's test? If you take the vertical circumference of the shoulder, if there is a dislocation, there is an increased uh, uh, vertical circumference is what you need to basically remember. Hamilton ruler test. Typically, if you put a straight ruler, it will be touching the acromion process and the lateral epicondyle. Normal people it won't. Because in the shoulder dislocation, this is axillary nerve injury. Axillary nerve injury will lead to deltoid paralysis. That will make the prominence of the shoulder to loss, lose. So, loss of prominence of the shoulder enables a ruler to touch both the acromion and also the lateral epicondyle of the humerus is what you have to basically remember. Similarly, what are the five hot short questions you need to remember about dislocation. Most common joint to undergo recurrent dislocation is shoulder. Most common, um, I mean uh, 
commonest type of shoulder dislocation is anterior and once more in the anterior subthoracoid is the location which is much more common is what you need to remember and which branch which nerve is injured it is the circumflex branch of the axillary nerve is the one which is basically in injured is what you need to ultimately remember then another common question recurrent dislocation if it is happening what type of movement will lead to recurrent dislocation it is the abduction external rotation is the one which will lead to development of uh, recurrent dislocation if somebody had uh, subluxio erecti which is inferior dislocation what is the common force acting it is a hyper abduction force hyper abduction is the one which lead to development of inferior dislocation of the if it is hyper abducted hand then automatically shoulder get humeral head get dislocated down by the gravity is what you need to understand so what is the most common type of the hip fracture is the next important tamil nadu post graduate entrance question in the case of the children so it is a trans cervical fracture basically fracture sub types kya kya hota hai out of the hip fractures in the case of the children we have trans epiphyseal separation then trans cervical fracture which is most common type cervical trochanteric fracture intertrochanteric fracture there are the various sub types out of which which is most common type doctor trans cervical is most common type so 2014 tamil nadu pg means it will be in 2015 appg kerala pg so be very sure now doctor what type of dislocation is most common type postural lateral falling on a outstretched hand is the most common predisposing factor is what you need to basically remember the next hot shot topic congenital dislocation of the hip even in tamil nadu post graduate 2014 entrance so doctor fundamental problem kya hota hai developmental dysplasia mein the femoral head displaced from the acetabular cup in the embryonic life fetal life because of that the acetabular shape become misshapen and uh, in the adulthood even if you try to reduce it if the acetabular roof size is very badly affected then it become difficult to put it back so what are the important important things on congenital dislocation abduction become limited especially if you flex abduction become limited in case of congenital dislocation asymmetrical thigh folds that side where the uh, dislocation is there there is a unexpected thigh fold will be appearing and if you flex the knee joint and look at the vertical height there is a decrease in the height which is called galliasi sign then trendlenburg positivity telescopy that means easy movement of the limb because the dislocation aap isko kisi bhi direction mein move kar sakte like a automatic gear in the mercedes then vascular sign of narad they're all the classical features which you typically come across then radiologically what are the things the shenton's line become broken and femur neck become antiverted and there is a failure of the development of the acetabulum with an increased slope of the acetabular roof is what you classically will come across so doctor we have discussed in a greater detail congenital dislocation in our regular orthopedics class which is there in the online video library <coughs> you can review that now doctor what is the first sign of workman's ischemia i am very happy to see our kakinada students all the way uh, after a long time workman's ischemia a pain which is out of proportion to the amount of the initial injury injury thoda hota pain jyada hoga which is out of proportion is the earliest sign what are the five p's doctor pain pulselessness paresthesia pallor etc out of that don't wait for pulselessness that is the last thing to appear is what you need to remember 
Infraspinatus syndrome. This is the only atypical question in the TNPG out of 10 questions 2014. So, suprascapular nerve injury in the supraglenoid notch is the classical location. What subtype of people are vulnerable to this? Those who happen to abduct their hand above their head. So, volleyball players, baseball players, tennis uh, playing guys, anyone who abducts the hand above the head is uh, the one who is vulnerable. You have seen recent Jipmer uh, on one of the exams, markers of bone formation, markers of bone dissolution is one of the favorite questions of the examiner. <coughs> yeah. So, typically if you look at the markers of the bone resorption, carboxy terminal cross-linking telopeptide of the collagen, pyridinolin, lysyl pyridinolin, tartrate resistant acid phosphatase and hydroxyproline, they are all the ones which are the biochemical markers is what need to be remembered. There is alkaline phosphatase, procollagen, osteocalcin, alkaline phosphatase, they are all the markers of bone formation, the list need to be remembered. So only one or two questions of 2014 Tamil Nadu PG are little atypical, eight questions are conquerable basically. Now let us see 2013 Tamil Nadu PG, structural support to the bone, biscuit question is caused by collagen. If you thought uh, ground substance that is uh, overshooting a simple question, right doctor? So 90 percent is a type 1 collagen which is also found in tendons and also in the skin is what you need to remember. Fracture healing may different uh, stages hota hai. What is the characteristic stage out of all this? It is the callus formation. You have a hematoma, angiogenesis, calcification of cartilage, cartilage removal, bone formation, bone remodeling. That is how you will divide. The stage where there is a cartilage calcification is called the stage of the callus formation is the most characteristic feature of the bone formation is what need to be remembered. <coughs> now doctor, what is commonest site of Ibing sarcoma? Another classical question, egg bone tumor mein hoga, agar huye to kiske upar hoga, which are diaphysial, which are epiphysial, which are metaphysial, the list 100 percent you need to be sure about. So, Ewing sarcoma, osteoid osteoma, classical tumors which arise on the shaft, which is uh, diaphysial, is what need to be remembered. Congenital telepus equinovirus may. You have a adduction deformity, then uh, inversion equinus. So now the question comes, which deformity occur where? Equinus occur at ankle, plantar flexion and uh, inversion and internal rotation occur at subtalar joint which is the other name for talocalcaneal joint and the medial subluxation of the talonavicular and calcaneo cuboidus will lead to adduction deformity. Out of all this, it is the talonavicular joint which is most characteristic out of all the primary pathology which is involved in congenital tedipus equinovirus. Then, pyogenic cosmomyelitis. Once more, you take the top 20 topics, high yield topics. My bet karke bolta hon, 80 percent questions top 20 mein hi reta. Two questions, examiner ka fantasy ko chodo. But the 80 percent you should do correct. Any entrance exam. So, huh? periosteal newborn formation, most characteristic feature. Osteomyelitis is a topic of most commons. Most common organism is Staph aureus. Most common method of transmission is hematogenous. And in children, it is the metaphysis which is rich in blood supply is most vulnerable part of the bone. Thoracolumbar spine is the most common part in the spine involved and uh, 
earliest finding is on x-ray periosteal newborn formation which will appear within about 7 to 10 days is what you need to basically remember. Oakman's ischemic contraction of the forearm. Most vulnerable muscle will be flexor, digitorum, profundus is what we need to basically remember. Capital coxavara. This is different from the regular, see, coxavara is an alteration in the angle between the head and the shaft of the femur through the neck. So it can occur because of any angulation happening at the head or the one which is happening at the level of the neck. Typically, which cause may, it involves typically the head. Angulation of the head specifically is responsible, which is then called capital coxavara. First of all, what is the normal angle? Normal angle is around 120 degrees. And any medial growth of the physial plate lead to development of uh, the coxavara congenitally leading to capital coxavara. Severe osteoarthritis, leprthus disease, chondroosteodystrophy, hypothyroidism are the common underlying causes for a capital coxavara. If you look at the fibrous dysplasia, we get what is called shepherd cook deformity it is called as. So that is not included under the uh, subcategory of uh, the cause arising from the head. So um, metabolic bone disease or any post parthus deformity, post traumatic, uh, they are the other important causes and shepherd cook deformity is the severe most form of the coxavara is what you need to understand. Now doctor, study traction, then external rotation, abduction, extension. These are the ones which are done to relocate the posture dislocation of the hip. You will do traction, then external rotation and then abduction and extension maneuver. What is the eponymous name given for this maneuver? Basically, it is called Biglow's method is what you need to remember. So, some maneuvers and their names also. Examiner has a fantasy for eponymous Gardner's classification. Uh, then a uh, so lot of eponymous names. Arthropedics is a subject of uh, British, French. Uh, few Sir, 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 we have to remember. Sir Arthur Cooper, uh, Sir Bristow, Sir uh, Ronald, etc. Hmm? Then uh, plain x-ray showing onion peel classical of Ewing sarcoma. Summarize doctor quickly. Sundry appearance osteogenic sarcoma. Soap bubble is osteoclastoma. Onion peel is Ewing sarcoma. Shepherd croup is fibrous dysplasia. And whenever there is any big TB leading to paravertebral abscess, it looks like aortic aneurysm if you take a plain radiograph. Hence called aneurysmal sign. And whenever that TB lead to development of erosion of the vertebral body. Wherever aneurysm is there also, it will erode the vertebral body. Hence called aneurysmal type TB, aneurysmal sign in anterior TB. Train to one in slipped capital femoral epiphysis, parthis may sagging rope and chondrosarcoma may patchy calcification. Nowadays, any entrance book, if you pick up, you will have all the summaries. But the challenge is, who will remember them? It is easy nowadays. Up Wikipedia jana. Shepherd cook means ek bar shepherd cook dekhe to. Wikipedia mein images will be there. Right? Or Google image search. Don't make the preparation very passive. In our days we need to go pick up a radiology book. Open it. Go to the page. Index. Where is the shepherd cook? Oh, bahut. Tang ki kaam hai. And Jobi wo kiya, utna exercise kiya, usko seed nahi mila. That is also there. But uh, let me tell you, uh, not by doing that they did not get the seed visa nahi. But uh, you make your preparation more practical oriented. You go to YouTube. If you are bored about reading orthopedics, you go to YouTube. And you simply type uh, posture dislocation of hip. 
while accident is happening after accident happened while doing surgical reduction in the ot and post operatively a patient who delivers his interview all videos will be there if you feel bored but the idea is what you should not be bored if you are going for reading room means eh? if you are bored don't go to reading room don't read there are more beautiful things to do but if you are reading keep yourself in a good pace that is very important and as you keep reading and let me tell you for every student who will have exposure to all 12 clinical departments some may have because uh, abba is a dermatologist amma is a neurologist he may have little exposure or maybe that professor is good uh, in the uh, college where we studied tell me one medical college where all 12 clinical subject professors will be excellent and show you cases every day like a breakfast uh, clinical breakfast difficult the reason there is an inevitable element of imagination that should percolate through your rendeva but still you need to be on the game and on the race okay doctor the reason if you get any doubt duplicated uh, pelvic elliptical system lily droop sign you go to google image search and type lily droop as you type lily only it will keep showing you lily your girlfriend lily the silly lily uh, droop sign automatically google will give google with that there ha so that's the point but keep you going and don't mug it up don't do that you will not remember and if you really go by logic definitely you will remember longer and it will also be helpful in the down the line patchy calcification is a feature of chondrosarcoma <clears throat> now doctor flexion of distal interphalangeal joint with fixing of proximal interphalangeal joint basically is testing the action of what it is testing the action of flexor digitorum profundus how does it basically act doctor along with pronita or quadratus flexor digitorum profundus flexor pollicis longus they form the deep layer of the ventral forearm muscles and it is the one which will be acting that is the digitorum profundus will be acting like a flexor of the wrist metacarpophalangeal and the interphalangeal joints is what you have to ultimately remember where will you see evolution of anteriorly spine examine see the ek hi baat puch sakta na which muscle has got a originate anteriorly spine so that uh, whenever it is forcibly contracting it lead to avulsion rectus femoris classically has got the origin from the anterior superior iliac inferior iliac spine and that's the reason any um, uh, rectus femoris uh, contraction will lead to avulsion injury oh this is a beautiful question doctor once more it is going to come in the images examiner dena hai to beautiful image based question he can create for you he can give you a nice traumatic hand and tell you if you are a plastic surgeon which area you are afraid to uh, repair so what are the various zones is an important question up to here you call zone 1 this is called zone 2 doctor no man's area no man's land this this part once more this comes from a google image search uh, so only reading zone 2 zone 2 zone 2 zone 2 you will forget ek baar ek clinical image or you go to video youtube and say zone 2 show me they will cut and show you on uh, youtube huh so patients themselves are available zone 4 zone 5 is what you have to basically remember so no man's zone actually why they call no man if you happen to do any uh, flexor tendinous repair in that location healing become difficult that's reason so uh, zone 1 is distal to the insertion of the flexor digitorum superficialis zone 2 is called bunnell's no man's land and zone 3 is distal edge of the flexor retinaculum 
and zone 4 is within the carpal tunnel, zone 5 is proximal to carpal tunnel. So that is how the different zones it is divided is what you have to ultimately remember doctor. <coughs> Khan says Google is annoying sir. Are? Ajkal life partner we are getting on Google. Right. So uh, uh, Google has enabled, no one can escape Google. The moment uh, the Air Asia aeroplane goes into sea, it will appear on Google. Right. Because the pilot while going into water only will send one Twitter. I am going into water, please spread the message. So, uh, yeah, Google helps sometimes. Uh, now, doctor, what is not true about Brody's abscess? What is Brody's abscess? Subacute osteomyelitis is called as Brody's abscess. Classically, um, when there is a draining done, I mean a draining abscess is extending onto the skin, that leads to development of a Brody's abscess. What is the most common organism responsible, Dr. Staph aureus, classically? And what, where do you find this? That was the question. Question ka answer waha hai. Will it involve the shaft is the question. Osteomyelitis itself involves metaphysis, not diaphysis. So that is a point uh, you need to basically appreciate that it is not a true point about uh, Brody's abscess. So this is a classical example. From metaphysical, it will extend up. Huh? So that is the point. Then cancellous bone graft. 2012, Tamil Nadu PG entrance. Huh? So cancellous bone graft. Typically, what does it provide? <coughs> uh, yeah. Sahasra is asking for online students, is there any choice of writing subject exams? Definitely. We will be more than happy to find you every week uh, spending time with us. So you can call the helpline to um, uh, enable your account to write the subject test. Uh, now, doctor. Different types of grafts. Cancellous graft provides osteogenesis for healing. Other type is called cortical bone graft. It is the one which provides the structural support. There is a main difference. And what is the common source for cortical bone graft? It is a fibula. It is what you need to understand. Now, doctor, <coughs> modified zones operation. Where will you do basically? That is good. <coughs> Modified zones tendon transfer. Zones was the surgeon in the World War I. Okay. So, if you have a fantasy for watching World War movies, it is another way to get uh, the kick in our days uh, um, Schindler's List. Uh, so many beautiful World War movies, uh, Nazi concentration camps, guns of Neveron and all that. Wonderful. That gives little push. Come on. Like a, a entrance is like a battle, war. Eh? And you need to get into that warring mood, basically. Sunday, Hotana bahut warring mood hai. Nobody agrees that their, their answer is wrong. Eh? So, uh, sometimes... So during Malwar I, Sir Robert Jones, what did he do? Basically, he has taken the, uh, he has done the transfer um, between the PT. So, Pronita uh, Teris, uh, PT. What is the name given for it? PT is called, you can see, PT. Pronita Teris. It is called Universal Donor. In the tendons. Kisi our tendon ka dikkat ho gaya to pronita teres can be used in order to act like a pulley for that. So, extensor carpi radialis brevis and pronita teres ko, he has done a tendon transfer, um, which is called the Jones transfer, is what need to be remembered. Where is it? Tabi alnar palsy 
is a very important question. <coughs> Whenever there is any cubitus valgus deformity, virus hota hai gun stock. Valgus means there is more lateral deviation. So, ulnar nerve is passing medially, it will become cut. Typically, when will it basically happen? Whenever there is any uh, lateral condylar fracture of the humerus is there, then it won't grow, lateral condyle. Only medial condyle continue to grow. And that lead to cubitus valgus. And the valgus will lead to cutting of the ulnar nerve over a period of time. That is called tardy ulnar palsy. Whenever you do the arthrodesis of knee, See, doctor, just because Dr. Budilingam has given a MCQ called knee arthrodesis ka angle kitna hai, agar aap pure arthrodesis ka angle padte gaye to end point nahi hai hota. That's the reason, by now you must come to a point. Most of the entrance oriented books kya deta? They will give a complete comprehensive, for everything they will give one page long explanation nowadays. They will put a lot of things which are there in the book. But you need to judge how far is it important. That is important. Okay? Suppose if you want to cram every bite of it difficult, just because he asked. So what is the best way? You check whether this belongs to the high yield topics list given top 20 then iska nature pata chalega aapko a repeatedly puchne wale topic ka cheez hai ya occasionally it happened if it happened occasionally just know about it that's all because the next occasion where you are going to exam it need not come okay so doctor arthrodesis means fixed position mein final settlement to Generally, if it is knee, the most optimal position for it is 10 degrees of axial rotation and 0 to 20 degrees of flexion. That is the position at which you need to do the arthrodesis. How will you correct the genuvalgum is a very important question. It depends. If the patient is a skeletally immature child, then what you will do? Medial, tibial, epiphyseal, epiphyseodesis is what you will be doing. Suppose if he is a skeletally mature guy, then you will be doing a supracondylar closed wedge distal femoral osteotomy at the center of rotation of the angulation called Cora is what you will basically do if it is a elderly child is what you need to remember. Elderly, I mean skeletally mature guy. Jefferson's fracture is what type of fracture? Fracture of the C1 is called Jefferson's fracture.